Welcome to the Blade of Tech channel, 68th edition and second year of the Space and Tech Rewind. We are reviewing the milestones that occurred on each day in the week of September 27th to October 3rd in space exploration, science, and technology. September 27th, 1908. The first production Ford Model T car left the factory on this date. It was assembled at the BK Avenue plant in Detroit, Michigan, which had built various earlier models, including the models B and R, in the prior four years. The car was introduced to the market four days later. The Model T had a 20 horsepower four cylinder engine, and the entry version was initially priced at $850, about $24,000 in 2020, eventually falling to as low as $260 in 1925. It was produced for 19 years until May 26, 1927, with some 15 million having been manufactured, making an indelible impact on society. Refining the manufacturing process over the years reduced production time within two years from 12 hour and eight minutes to one hour and 33 minutes. By the end of the Model T era, a vehicle left the assembly line every 24 seconds. The Model T was only available in black from 1914 to 1925, which has shaped America's perception of the early automobile and given rise to the apocryphal quote attributed to founder Henry Ford. In actuality, the single color was due to the limitations of chemical processes at the time. Black paint was the quickest to dry, but early and late productions of the Model T also included colors such as green, blue, red, and gray. September 28, 1858. Donati's Comet became the very first to be photographed on this date. It was a bright comet that developed a spectacular curved dust tail with thin two gas trails and was captured by an English commercial photographer, William Usherwood, using a portrait camera at a low focal ratio. Italian astronomer Giovanni Donati first discovered his namesake comet that same year. At Harvard University, astronomer William Bond attempted an image on a colloidal plate the following night, but the comet shows only faintly and no tail can be seen. Bond was subsequently able to evaluate the image on Usherwood's plate. The earliest celestial daguerreotypes were made in 1850 to 1851, though after the Donati comet, no further comet photography took place until 1881, when French astronomer Pierre Janssen and U.S. scientist John Draper took the first generally recognized photographs of a comet. September 29, 1954. CERN, a French acronym for the Centre European de Recherche Nucléaire, was created on this date by the 12 founding member states. As stated by CERN's first director general, Robert Amar, quote, gave the new organization a mission to provide first-class facilities, to coordinate fundamental research in particle physics, and to help reunite the countries of Europe after two world wars. In 1952, the third session of the provisional CERN Council chose Geneva, Switzerland to be the home of the new CERN laboratory. Official groundbreaking took place at the Meyerin site on May 17th of 1954. Most know CERN as the Particle Bombardment Laboratory if they know them at all but it is also the birthplace of the World Wide Web. English scientist Tim Berners-Lee invented this particular hypertext protocol in 1989. He wrote the code for the first web browser in 1990 while employed at CERN in Geneva. The browser was released outside CERN to other research institutions starting in January of 1991 and then to the general public in August of 1991, where it went viral. The World Wide Web as an enhancement to the internet has been central to the development of the information age. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to tech documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science, and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones. Gameplay recordings can be discovered on the Belated Tech Gaming channel in videos called Walkthroughs and side missions. Reviews of tools and equipment hail from the Tool Crib. 
and reviews of small electronics and appliances arrive by way of the Radio Shed. Looking for a specific video on our channel that we may have mentioned in one of our other videos? Links to those episodes can be found in the description section below. Also, we have begun labeling our video titles with numbers, such as M105 for Milestones 105 or S49 for Short 49, so viewers can perform a title search. Finally, you can peruse our entire 300 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which conveniently sort videos by subject. September 30th, 1906, the world's first international balloon race began on this date. It was won by a coal gas balloon, the United States. Pilot Lieutenant Frank P. Lom of the U.S. Signal Corps and his co-pilot Major Henry B. Hersey of the Weather Bureau flew 400 miles from Paris, France to Scarborough, England in 22 hours and 15 minutes to win the Gordon Bennett Cup. The race sponsor, James Gordon Bennett, publisher of the New York Herald, was famous for financing Henry Stanley's expedition into Africa to find David Livingston. The 1906 balloon race launched at the Jardin des Tuileries with 250,000 spectators. Of the 17 entrants, only seven reached England safely. The American win promoted ballooning back home and reserved the U.S. as the host for the next race in 1907, held at St. Louis, Missouri. October 1st, 1958, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, was formally organized and began operations as the government agency in charge of the National Civilian Space Program on the state. NASA was activated in accordance with the terms of Public Law 85-568 and the non-military space projects which had been conducted by the Advanced Research Projects Agency, but then transferred to the jurisdiction of NASA. Concurrently, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, the NACA, a U.S. federal agency founded during World War I on March 3, 1915 to undertake, promote, and institutionalize aeronautical research, was dissolved. Its facilities and personnel became part of NASA. Do you agree with our choices for events during this week in space and tech history, or are there other events that were better? Go ahead and share with us by dropping a comment below. If you have suggestions for an event in the future, let us know. We'll credit events we pick for future videos to those viewers that post them. We hope you have been enjoying our content. Have we earned your subscription to our channel? If yes, and you have not taken the opportunity to subscribe, please take a moment to do so now and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. We want to continue delivering great content to you can always unsubscribe and subscribing is free. October 2nd, 1937. Films of moving x-ray images on a fluoroscopic screen showing the movement of organs of the human body were shown on this date at the American Rentgen Ray Society convention in New York City. The images were filmed with a home 16mm movie camera at 16 frames per second. Two seconds exposure could capture two or three beats of the heart, the act of breathing, movements of the diaphragm, or motion of joints. The films were made by doctors William Stewart, William Hoffman, and Francis Gisselin from Manhattan's Lenox Hill Hospital. It may surprise many that fluoroscopes were commercialized and used in everyday settings. For example, in the late 1940s, and early 1950s, the shoe-fitting X-ray unit was a common shoe store sales promotion device, and nearly all stores had one. The X-rays penetrated the shoes and feet and then projected an image of the feet within the shoes on a fluorescent screen. As many as 10,000 of these devices were in use at their peak of popularity. The radiation hazards associated with shoe-fitting X-ray units were recognized as early as 1950. The machines were also often out of adjustment and leaking radiation into the surrounding area. By 1970, shoe-fitting x-ray units had been banned in 33 states and heavily regulated in the other 17. And in 1981, the last operating unit was removed from service.
October 3, 1952. Hurricane, the first British atomic bomb, was tested on this date at the Montebello Islands, Australia, becoming the third country in the world to test such a weapon. The bomb used an improved plutonium implosion device similar to the U.S.'s Fat Man. To test the effects of a ship smuggled bomb, a threat of great concern at the time, Hurricane was exploded inside the hull of the 1,450-ton frigate HMS Plym, which was anchored in 40 feet of water 400 yards offshore. The explosion, 9 feet below the waterline, left a saucer-shaped crater on the seabed 20 feet deep and 1,000 feet across. We previously covered the U.S.'s second combat-deployed nuclear bomb in Nagasaki in Milestones 117, and the USSR's first nuclear test in Milestones 121. On August 23, 2021, Virgin Orbit, the air-to-space satellite delivery company, announced they would be going public through a merger with a $383 million special purpose acquisition company, a SPAC, called NextGen. A concurrent private investment in public equity round, also called a PIPE, with participation from Boeing and AE Industrial Partners, provided an additional $100 million. The funds will go towards scaling up manufacturing of Virgin Orbit's Launcher One rocket and to fund growth of its, quote, space solutions business and new product development initiatives. The merger values Virgin Orbit at $3.7 billion. The company has had only one successful launch of a payload on June 30th of 2021. Virgin Orbit joins rocket rivals Rocket Lab and Astra in going public via SPAC merger. Industry leader SpaceX is still a private company. We previously covered Virgin Orbit in Short 19, Short 39, and Short 46. We hope you enjoyed this 68th episode of Bladed Tech Space and Tech Rewind. If so, click that like button. Don't forget to subscribe or just stay in touch by following us on our microblogging accounts, which are listed below, as well as in the community feed for this channel. We announce all new videos on those outlets. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed and Minds page, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed, and where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.